Conferencia a cargo del doctor Kit Molinar. Profesor de Ingeniería de Construcción y Gestión en el Departamento de Ingeniería Civil, Ambiental y Arquitectónico de la Universidad de Colorado Boulder. Decano asociado en el Colegio de Ingeniería y Ciencias Aplicadas de la misma universidad. Su investigación se centra en el análisis de riesgos, la ejecución de proyectos alternativos y la estimación de costos para proyectos de infraestructura. El doctor Molinar es un miembro activo de la Junta de Investigación de Transporte, de la Sociedad Americana de Ingenieros Civiles, de la Asociación de Gestión de la Construcción de América y del Instituto de Construcción de Diseño de América. Well, thank you all for the opportunity uh, to speak with you today. Thank you for the organization of this uh, wonderful conference. Um, I really do appreciate the opportunity to tell you a little bit about infrastructure in the United States and some things that we're learning uh, as we move forward. So you heard about my background as a professor. Uh, before I begin the presentation, I guess I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself personally and why I'm interested in this topic. Um, I grew up in a family. My father owned a construction company and um, I was always enamored. I always uh, wanted to build things and, and see the world improved through construction. Um, but my father uh, didn't think that was a good idea. Um, he thought rather than run his construction company, I should become an engineer. I should become what he thought of as a professional. And that is because in construction in the United States quite often We only award construction to the very lowest bidder. Whoever gives the lowest price is the builder of a project. And so he never really felt like a professional. Um, he always felt like he had to give the lowest price to win the next project. So when I became an engineer, um, and I did that because it's a more professional organization, a more professional uh, uh, thing to do with your career, I enjoyed that for quite some time, but I was always interested in the construction side of the business. So I got back into research to see how we could combine design and construction, to see how we could integrate what we do with design and how we build things to see if we could make more efficiency. Um, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today, is looking at innovation in our highway system and how integration and of design and construction and integrated teams are actually improving the way that we deliver our infrastructure. So I'd really like to do three things uh, in this presentation. The first is tell you how we deliver projects in the United States. Um, our contracting methods, or what we call our project delivery methods. Um, one thing that we haven't known is actually how these project delivery methods impact performance. Um, do the different ways that we deliver projects actually get things done faster, at a higher quality, or at a lower cost? So I'm going to tell you about a very recent study um, that uh, we finished in the United States and give you some facts um, that haven't before been known. And then finally, I'd like to talk about how we select our delivery systems. Um, now that we know a little bit more about how they perform from this study, should we be using that to choose the right delivery methods? So I want to give you a little context, um, a little idea of the US highway infrastructure. Um, we've had many successes. Um, you can drive from New York to California uninterrupted. Um, without a single traffic light. Um, we have uh, roads that are free to all of our public. We can get goods from one state to another, from one location to another, very, very easily. Um, this national system that we built really does uh, have standards across all of our states. These are four projects that I've worked on um, as an example. The one on the upper left, if you've been to Seattle or seen pictures of Seattle, this is the Alaska Way Highway Viaduct. It's a way to get across Seattle um, in front of the city and quickly get from the north to the south. Um, 
This is a new bridge that just opened from San Francisco to Oakland Bay. Um, and this bridge was recently completed with a 150 year design. So as Professor Pellicer talked about sustainability, this was looked at with 150 year construction in a seismic zone. Um, I've got a chance to work on some smaller projects as well. We have a lot of rural areas in the United States. Um, and this is an area on a, a mountain pass where we had avalanche problems and we've been able to create um, a path, a tunnel through there so it's safe all the time. And then finally, this is a bridge from uh, going from Seattle out to Redmond, connecting the University of Washington out to where Microsoft uh, offices are. Again, all very successful projects and has really helped to create an economy in the United States um, and mobility in the United States that I think is uh, truly one of the areas of our success is the infrastructure. But we've truly had challenges as well. Um, we are at a point now where our highways that were built in the 1950s and 1960s have deteriorated. We need to replace these highways. Um, this highway that I spoke about is actually no longer useful. Um, right now, the city of Seattle is building a tunnel to replace that highway because it's met its useful life. Um, this project uh, actually had some real problems with budget. It was four times its budgeted cost. So what we told the citizens it was going to cost, the actual cost was in excess of four times that amount. Um, and what we're really running into problems on is just the time that it takes to build projects. This project here took over 12 years to add a new lane to that project. So where we couldn't actually finish that project physically in less than a few years, because of all of the planning, the design, the legal aspects, um, it's taking uh, six times that length. So I would like to talk to you a little bit about how we deliver these projects and how we can improve that and show you some evidence. But before I uh, start with the, um, exactly what we're doing, I actually want to take a historic look. Um, I'm a professor, so I can think, uh, think big thoughts and look historically. I'd actually like to talk about contracting methods and where they started. When you look at where construction contracting started, it actually started with the Code of Hammurabi in 1800 BC. That was the first written contract that fixed accountability on one design builder, one master builder for both design and construction of a project. If you look through classical Greece and into the Middle Ages, the cathedrals that are built throughout Europe and many of the lasting structures, those again were built by one master builder, one person who did both design and construction. Um, it really wasn't until the Renaissance, um, the uh, 1500s, when Vitruvius wrote a book about architecture and we separated having architecture and design from construction. We also started to have trade guilds, masons, and we started to uh, separate both design and construction. In the United States, we use that system, this separation of the public agencies doing design and then the lowest bidder, like my father's company, winning the project and, and building it. Our whole highway system was built by the lowest bidder with um, the highway agencies doing the design. However, um, we've gotten into a place right now where it's taking too long to build those projects. We can't have that separation of design and construction. And so in the 1990s, we started to experiment with again, combining design and construction teams into one team to try and reduce the overall schedule. Um, 
We could not legally do that, and that's called design build, where we have one contract for design and construction um, until 2002. So only 15 years ago did we start combining these contracts uh, for project delivery methods. And then just five years ago, we came up with a new method called construction manager general contractor. And I'm gonna explain what this is, but this is a way that we can keep some of the separation of design and construction, but also overlap the teams. Okay. And again, this is only uh, five years old, but what I'm gonna talk to you about is looking at the performance of these different methods. So um, I'd like to show you exactly what I'm talking about. And in the United States Highway, we use three main methods, okay? One is design bid build, the next is construction manager, general contractor, and then the third is design build. And let me show you exactly what those are. So design bid build is what I talked about my father's company, right? It's completely designing a project 100% with a perfect set of plans, a perfect set of designs, and then we give that to the lowest bidder, and the lowest bidder builds that. However, we all know there's no such thing as a perfect set of plans. Um, it takes a long time to put those together. And then there's changes, there's errors, there's unforeseen conditions uh, that come up during construction. Those are some of the advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage here is the separation of design and construction. The public sector likes that because there's little opportunity for fraud. Um, there's transparent um, uh, competition, but it's also very uh, lengthy in its process. So from this, we've evolved something called construction manager general contractor. The big thing here, you note there's no communication in design bid build, but in construction manager general contractor, there is communication. There's no legal um, uh, combination of these entities, but there is communication between those. They work together all throughout design, and then once the design is done, they, this entity becomes the general contractor. They agree on a price. So together throughout design, they work on um, uh, constructability issues, cost issues, schedule issues, but there is no price. There's no price for the contract until they become the general contractor. The last form of delivery is truly design build. Um, and that is where we have one entity who has both engineering and construction services, and they deliver the project based on a very minimal design. So for example, most highway projects, the agency, the owner, would can complete about 10 to 20% of the design. They would have the conceptual plans, about 10 to 20% of the design, and then the design builder will give a price and finish that, okay? So they will give a competitive lump sum price and, and finish that project, okay? As Professor Pellicer said before, there's two types of contracting methods. One is a low bid and one is a best value. We'll talk about both of those in a moment. They can be either awarded just on the lowest bid or on a combination of um, uh, technical proposal and price. So, as I said, we've recently discovered these new delivery methods. Um, really, in the time it takes to build a highway, 15 years of design build and five years of construction manager general contractor is really quite a short time. What we didn't know was how do these delivery methods perform? The public agencies who made these decisions really didn't have any idea about how much time or how much cost we were paying or saving by using these delivery methods. Um, 
The reason for that is each project is unique. And when you only look at case studies, single projects, it's difficult to know what the true performance is. So they wanted to know what's the schedule? What's the cost certainty? How sure are we that that cost won't grow? What is the cost growth if it happens? And so I led a team um, to do a research project, and that's what I'd really like to tell you about now, is a research project that we looked at for projects across the United States using these delivery methods to see how they performed. Um, it was a three-year research study with uh, more than uh, 15 researchers and, and 25 uh, agency or owner reviewers. Um, we've collected the largest number of projects ever studied uh, for highways, and we've been able to um, uh, determine the average performance of these. Where we really learned some things was then to go back and look at the best and the worst projects. Which ones had the best cost performance and why? Which ones had the worst performance and why? And so I'd like to share some of those results with you. Um, as you can imagine, the United States is a very large country and we have uh, 52, there's 50 states, but we actually have 52 different highway agencies. And we needed to try and collect data from as many of these uh, um, states and agencies as we, as we can. Um, we tried to look for projects that varied in size, in complexity, um, and all over the country. Um, we ended up being very successful with this. Uh, again, it took three years, but this is a map showing states with design-build experience. You see some in blue still have not done design-build. They've still just done the traditional design-bid-build. Um, we went to them with a very detailed questionnaire. We worked with their um, contract office to make sure we understood the cost and time. And then we also asked questions of the designers and the constructors and the project managers. What we were able to get for design build is a very good representation across the United States. You can see Florida has the very most um, experience with the method of design build. They were actually the first state to do that uh, in the late 1990s. Um, here are states with experience in construction manager, general contractor. Again, this method is only five years old, so we don't have as much experience across the United States. But with this innovative method, um, we do have enough completed projects to take a look at. So here um, is the, are the number of uh, completed projects that we found, and this is the largest sample of construction manager general contractor projects that we've found um, uh, that have been collected in the US. Finally, we wanted to benchmark this against our traditional method. And so here are the projects that we uh, looked at um, throughout the United States in the traditional design bid build method. So when we put them all together, we found a sample of almost 300 completed projects Again, they were completed, so we knew what the outcome was. Um, we looked at these after they were done. Um, we have 134 design bid build, 34 because that is truly the number that was completed in the United States at that time. Um, and then we're separating our design build into those that are awarded through the lowest bidder and those that are given to the best value. And again, Best value means some combination of cost, but also design. Um, that design could be uh, the quality of the design, the schedule of the design. Uh, you can be rated on your team qualifications or your past performance, any of those items in addition to the low bid. So in all, we have a very good sample of projects um, that are about half traditional and half these innovative methods, and we were hoping to see how they performed. So um, we learned some things about 
why owners select these different methods. And the first thing is how they relate to complexity. Um, we came up with a scale of project complexity that dealt with uh, how many bridges, how many uh, interchanges are there, if there was a lot of environmental issues. We had a scale of three levels of complexity from the very simplest projects uh, through the large corridor and urban projects. And our sample here is pretty good. We had, of the 291 projects, um, about 15% uh, were small, non-complex projects, and then about 140 or about half were the major, the most complex projects. What we found with our traditional method is that the traditional design bid build method is being used on the least complex projects. Um, what we have here is uh, our design bid build being used on almost half of the sample as those non-complex projects. So agencies are fully designing the simpler projects and then awarding those through low bid. You see very few complex projects now being done through design, bid, build. When we look at our construction manager, general contractor, again, the construction manager, general contractor, means that we bring the contractor in as a partner during design and then negotiate a price for construction. Here, you see almost the opposite. They're being used mainly on the most and moderately complex projects, but rarely on these simple projects. So this is definitely for more complex projects. And then when we look at design build, um, we can again see the two types of design build. When we look at our low bid design build, where we're just hiring the design builder on price, we have um, more non-complex projects versus these projects where we're awarding on a best value, a combination of cost and technical. Here you can see we have very few non-complex projects, mostly complex. Okay. It, it's logical that the more complex, the longer the project, the more intricate, um, we would use a best value selection versus a low bid. Um, the, if you think about awarding a project that might have only 10 to 20% of design done, you don't want to just take the lowest bidder for that award. There's still a lot of design to complete and you want to encourage innovation. The best value selection allows for innovation. It allows for teams to come up with different solutions and it um, makes more sense to use it on our most complex projects. So um, that's complexity. Let's look at our overall project cost. And um, I have some, some data to show you here. Um, what, what we have is a good average size of the projects where our design bid build, our traditional projects, are about 20 million US dollars. Um, our design build best value are a little bit larger. Um, and our construction manager, general contractor, are a little bit larger. And one thing we found was the design build low bid was used only on very small projects. This was a surprise to us. But you can see that we have a very wide range of projects as well. Um, these are very large urban interchanges um, through large cities uh, and a very expensive projects. Um, we did find, though, that traditional is used on some large projects. But um, when we look at average project schedule, this is very, very surprising. What we found, and we didn't have schedule data for all of the projects, most of the projects we had, you see a little bit smaller sample. What we found was that our alternative methods were being finished in about half the time. Okay. About half the time with these new methods, 
than our traditional design bid build methods. Um, you can see our mean project duration for um, CM, our construction manager, general contractor, is almost half the time of our design build, uh, design bid build projects. The main savings is coming in design. These data are for the design, and here you can see we are finishing the design in about a third of the time. So the reason for that is because the agencies don't have to design a project that can be bid to 10 or 12 companies. They can design a project for one company, and they work together uh, to do that. The mean construction, um, the time that we're actually at work in the, in the highway is very similar. Um, and I think it's actually better to show you this graphically, though, than in the table. But one thing that we need to look at is the difference in cost. It's very difficult to compare projects that are so different in cost um, when they are uh, for schedule. So what we did was we ended up looking at the mo two most common methods for small projects, small non-complex, which was our design bid build and our design build. And this is a small project in the United States between two and $10 million. It might just be one interchange or a small section of highway. Um, and we picked very comparable projects here. We have um, 10 design build low bid and 19 design bid build. And we were able to get very similar costs um, so that we knew we had a good sample to compare. And what we found was, again, design build low bid was delivering projects in half the time of our traditional methods. This had never been measured before, so it was very interesting. And again, time being uh, saves here through, mainly through the design. So when we look at this graphically, what we can see is design bid build on average was taking well over 700 days to get the construction, uh, to just get to bid. And what agencies are very interested in as well is this time that they actually know what the project will cost. So if I'm a state or a city and I'm trying to budget my projects and look at my money, um, I, it's very important when I know I have a fixed price. I know how much the project's going to cost. When we found our design build low bid projects, what they were doing was finishing much earlier, as you can see, mainly because of the overlap in construction and the, the overlap of design and construction and the shorter agency design time. But then we also moved the point of cost certainty when the agency, um, the owner, knows how much the project is going to cost much further back. And that is very good knowledge for the owner or the agency to have. So we similarly looked at um, design, build, build, construction manager, general contractor, and design, build, best value between 10 and 50 million. So these were our more complex projects. And we found that all three different types of delivery methods were used there. Um, here, I'll quickly show you the data, but we had very, very comparable project uh, costs. Again, we saw very significant savings in, in um, overall project duration that mainly came from the design time. And then our construction duration was actually less in each of our alternative methods. So again, I'll show you that graphically. This is the same data, just graphically. And what you see is the construction of those projects was actually taking much less time than the design in our traditional methods. It's just taking us too long to get to getting the construction started. When we look at um, design build best value, so this idea of getting one designer and builder 
to build the project, that saved us quite a bit of time. We were almost finishing the project in this method by the time we completed design in our old methods. Um, and we were getting to know our costs better, but it's still not as fast, and this really surprised us. It's still not as fast as the construction manager general contractor. And the reason is the agency has to take a long time to get to a place of competition, to prepare a request for proposal, to have three or four, sometimes five or seven, uh, design builders propose on a project. This process takes a very long time. What they're doing here is hiring through qualifications-based selection, purely through qualifications, one contractor to work with during design, and then they give advice during design, and then they let out multiple construction packages. Okay. So they truly are saving a lot of time. They're reducing competition, but they're saving an enormous amount of time. Um, these data that you're seeing now were just released last year um, in the United States, and it's truly changing the way that we're doing business in many of those states who are not working in this manner. So the innovation, the combination of design and construction through either of those two methods truly is uh, saving us time. So then, of course, uh, the question is cost. So um, how much does it cost? Well, that's difficult to tell. Um, we're looking at two, two things. One is we've come up with this measure of project intensity, which is cost per day. And what do we mean by cost per day? That means how much work can we put in place every day which is a measure of how efficient we are. Um, by far, our construction manager, general contractor, um, is putting in uh, the most project costs per day, um, followed by our design build best value. So from that perspective, we're being more efficient in how quickly we spend our funds. The other thing to look at is how did we do in terms of cost at award? And what this shows is the cost of our project versus the estimated cost. So the agency prepared their expected costs, and then these are the results of the bids. Um, we are in a very good economic cycle right now in the United States, and our design bid build, we're coming in at almost 10% less than the expected costs and our design builds were coming in between five and 7%. Now what you see is we have lost some cost performance with construction manager, general contractor. It's because they're negotiating with one company versus doing low bid with many companies. Right? So we do see a trade-off, right? 3% more on the estimate. What's interesting is if you look at the standard deviation here, so standard deviation is a measure of the spread of the bids, so the dispersion or the, how wide the range is. These are just averages. You can see that we have a very wide range of project bids with when we're competitively bidding projects versus we have a much narrower band, more cost certainty with our construction manager, general contractor. So those are the cost results. And really, um, when you think about it, um, we have the opportunity to save a lot of time. Um, and in the United States, where we have a deteriorating infrastructure, we're starting to get more traffic congestion. We need to move more quickly to replace our highways. Time is very, very important. Um, we do have an opportunity to save time if we really want to save time and move all the way to construction manager, general contractor. 
we believe that we're going to pay more for that. And we need to make that idea, need to make the trade-off, is that time worth the additional cost? Um, there's economic impact, there's social impact. We need to look at all of these elements, but these data show us the true costs and the true time of these different delivery methods. So um, I wanna take just a few more minutes and tell you that um, there is no one single project delivery system. There is no one best. Um, just because you see the average cost of design build best value being uh, lower and the time being shorter, that doesn't mean that you should use that on every project. So we've come up with a way to select project delivery methods, and this was sponsor, a research project sponsored by all these departments of transportation. And we actually don't think that you should make a choice purely on performance. There's many other factors that you should look at. So we've come up with a simple method to do a workshop that looks at, um, first and foremost, your project goals. Why are you doing the project? Is speed the most important thing? Is uh, uh, cost the most important thing? Are you trying to create jobs with the project? Why are you trying to do this? So you can look transparently um, at the results of the data and then make the decision. So we have evaluation factors that you uh, can use through this workshop process that's described on the previous website. It looks at what are your goals in terms of schedule, complexity, how much design do you have complete, and then gets into risk factors. Um, from there, you also need to think about your staff. You need to think about the industry and the capacity that they have. And then uh, look at what competencies, what skills you have with your contractors as well. So I didn't want to just show you the data um, that show average project costs or schedule being different. I really want you to think more holistically as you look at innovative project delivery methods um, and as you try and choose project delivery methods. This study was just, um, this study was really just about highways. Um, similar things apply to buildings, although it's not quite so, so clear. Um, the lines are a little bit more blurred between project delivery methods, um, but I think you can use this approach through looking at performance and then looking at project goals to select project delivery methods, not only on highway projects, but also buildings as well. So um, I hope that we covered the goals here and thank you for your time. I really appreciate it.